Okay, so the other way of doing this, oops, it looks like I moved that one as well. Oh, because it's the same drawing. Okay, so the other way of doing this, now I've got my other pivots in the wrong spot, is I can select the cell down here and I can do my control C for copy with, you know, with the timeline itself selected, just control C for copy. And then I can select the other drawings that I'm interested in updating. And then I can right click and I can do a paste special. And when I do the, the paste special, if you go into advanced, then you see that there's an option here that says update drawing pivot. So if I select that option and click OK, you'll notice that also updates the pivot on my drawings. So in a way that way is faster because let's say you had 20 drawings, you don't have to flip back and forth through the different drawings to paste the pivot. So both ways are equally good for different scenarios um, and they're both equally valid. Okay, so that's about copying the um, pivot point from one drawing to another drawing. Now the last thing I had a question on um, in response to the video was what about this pivot point right here on my transform tool? Um, what is this pivot point and why can't I use this pivot point to set you know the pivot? What this pivot point is when you select a drawing layer or a peg layer or you know any kind of layer if I go up the hierarchy and oh I don't have a hierarchy set up on this one yet but if I were to go up the hierarchy to the other drawing layers then what this pivot does is by default the transform tool will take into account the pivot that has already been set on that drawing or that peg. So that's by default its starting location. Um, now you'll notice though that you can mouse over this pivot and you can drag it around. When you drag it you see that there's a ghost there that's still there that represents where the permanent pivot of that drawing is. So basically what this is trying to indicate to me is that if for some reason on this frame and this frame only I would like to temporarily rotate around that pivot up there I can but if I deselect and select again it's gonna go back to this pivot because this is the location of the permanent pivot of that drawing layer. So then I guess the question is you know when would this be useful? And I think that you want to be cautious about using that kind of um, temporary pivot manipulation when you're doing something like a cutout character because, you know, you might think that you're rotating around that pivot, but all that you're doing when you're, ro when you're moving this temporary pivot is you're helping yourself visually to, to create the next position where this is going to exist. But this drawing layer internally its pivot point is still defined by this area so what it's going to try to do is calculate the transformations necessary to achieve this position um, you know th with this permanent pivot um, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing but the main end of the story is that when you're working with a cutout character you usually don't want to use that temporary pivot to move things around uh, you want to set the, te the, the permanent pivots, set them on your drawings and promote them up to the pegs or set them directly on the pegs with your rotate tool and use those, um, use those pivots as your permanent pivots that you're going to be animating with. If you're working in a scenario where, you know, you're animating like, I don't know, you're animating a cylindrical tube around or something and you'd like to, on one frame, just, you know, define the place where it's going to go. So let's say, let's do an example of this because I think this is a little bit confusing. So I'll just create a new scene. New scene. And um, it doesn't really matter what really resolution my scene is. Um, let me not save that file. Okay, so let's just take a rectangle. Nothing too exciting. And I will fill it in with a color. White. Okay, so I've got my, my rectangle here, and I'll set my pivot point to be at the bottom of this. So maybe most of the time I'm moving my rectangle around like this. But there might be one case or one scenario where I would like to sort of, you know, rotate this around something. Like maybe, maybe this is a plane 
that is um, orbiting the Earth, and the Earth is like down here. So if I drag my pivot point down to where the center of the Earth is, it will help me to, de to determine the next position of that element. But if I look back through that animation, you notice that the animation that it's doing is not exactly what I would have thought it would do from just rotating around that temporary pivot. And the reason for that is that the pivot internally is still here. So what it's doing is it's taking this as position A, and it's taking the second position as position B, and it's simply calculating the shortest distance between those two points. So really, if you want to, oops, sorry, if you want to get halfway in between and like move it up, you can adjust it to to do what you want it to do. Now it's fairly good. Um, so hopefully that cleared up a little bit of the confusion on pivot points. If you're working uh, with most 90% of the scenarios, you would want not to move your temporary pivot. Um, and then hopefully now you also understand how to copy and paste pivots from one drawing to another. And uh, if you're using Animate Pro or Harmony, then you know how to make use of this um, enable drawing pivot script to copy the pivots from your drawing layers up to your peg layers. So that's it, and stay tuned next week.